Hello, another laser video? Yes, I know, but after I make a review of this laser I got some comments and mails to upgrade its firmware and bring engraver to another level. Let's check if that's true. After assembly the laser I couldn't pass this tiny problem. You can see here that the groove is about 3.5mm wide and the spacer is just about 1mm bigger. That means that the seating surface is only about 0.5mm on each side. So I take a few minutes and make a bigger spacers. Much better. Ok, let's upgrade the firmware now. Firstly downloaded the files you need to upgrade. In the downloaded folder you got all the files and clear instructions for upgrading. So just follow the steps and you're done in a minute. Now connect the laser to a PC with USB cable. Don't plug the power supply this time. Now just push and hold the power button and meanwhile push the reset button. Then release power button. And PC will recognize as new storage device, like SD card or something. Now just copy new firmware into that folder and push the reset button to disconnect the laser. That's it, we got new firmware in our machine. After few days I making this, they changed process of upgrading, so you need to copy two files, but the instructions are clear, so it shouldn't be a problem there. Firmware is now upgraded. Because we're pretty limited with the laser GRBL, I try another software, Lightburn. And I can tell it's a great software. It offers us a lot of function and settings, but still missed some function for easier use. We can import many different files, or just sketch here and set up if you want to fill for engrave or just follow the lines for cutting. Another great function is when we import the XF files, we can edit it here so we can delete or add individual lines. You can try 30 days free version or buy license for I think about 40 bucks. I already upgraded the firmware, so laser is about 75% more powerful now. But to get even more out of that little machine, I will add air assist. It's making huge difference on cutting capacity. All we need to do is blow the dust out of cutting area. I got a lot of questions about air assist on previous videos, so I will show how I make it. I use that homemade airbrush compressor, which is far enough powerful so it runs only about 30-40% to of cutting time. Then I use this oxygen mask tube, which is already reduced to 2mm hose. I know it's hard time to get oxygen mask, but I got this tube into drawer for years. On the end of that tube I just connect cut at 08 needle so I can bend it to position that it blow close to cutting area. Blowing power simply regulated pressure. I think with 05 bar of pressure it blow enough. If I increase to 1 or 2 bar compressor run almost all the time, but the effect is totally the same. As I say I improvised here a lot, so I just connect the tubes with hot glue and hit a piece of shrinking tube around to get perfect diameter. So I just mount it between laser heatsink. And you know what? That simply air assist worked great. Let's see the result of engraving now. For engraving we got better result without air assist, so I leave the valve closed. Before firmware upgrade laser work only with 25% of power. So if we set M4 below 300 it leave no traces, because it wasn't 30% of power but only about 7.5%. After upgrade it start leaving traces if we set M4 to 200, so that's why the grayscale should work better now. Let's check. Here's the same image engraved with same settings, but upper one engraved with light burn and lower one with laser GRBL. First image was engraved with 100mm per second and 50% laser power. With GRBL it's almost invisible, but with light burn and same settings engraved object can be seen. But around every image light burn makes some kind of frame, which extend engraving time a lot. Probably just some settings, but from there I only use GRBL to see real difference after firmware upgrade. Top image was engraved before upgrade. I would say that grayscale engraving is better now, with much lower power. But my opinion is that Neji show us much more details. What about on other material? After upgrade it become enough powerful to engrave on stainless steel, but if we compare with 20W Neji, also non-anodized aluminium result look good. But if we compare with Neji 20W result, we can see the difference. Neji isn't just more powerful, but also laser focus is better, so it engraves more accurate with bigger power. Also if you engrave a really tiny object you can see the focus problem, because single dot is much bigger than on Neji laser. So with Neji we can engrave smaller objects with better details. With using permanent marker we can engrave also on Cooper, Inox and Steel, but the result isn't that good. I got much better result with 20W NJ laser model, check the video about. On leather got great result on engraving and cutting. 
and now check the cutting capacity. Before upgrade it stopped with 4mm balsa. After upgrade it cut 4mm balsa without air assist in 3 goes. But because of focus issue cutting line is quite thick, so we got 20 by 20 mm square almost 1 mm smaller and cutting lines are burned. If I try to cut same file with same settings but using air assist this time it cut 4mm balsa in 2 goes and the edges are cut at really clean at right angle and also dimension are much better. Material like 3mm plywood it can cut also before upgrade, just a bit slower. So check if it cut through 5mm hard plywood. The answer is nope. I try with 30 goes but it cut only 2 to 3mm deep. Neji 20 watt cut all the way through in only few passes. Next is 9mm spruce wood. After 20 passes it cut almost all the way through. But also if I try with 40 passes it can't cut through because of bad focus. Meanwhile 20 watt Neji cut the same piece of wood in only 6 passes. Orter has focus issue, so it always cut in two sides but not in other two. So after all these tests I can clearly say that Neji laser model is better. The Orter only make better result on balsa cutting. I can cut 10 mm balsa without starting a fire with Neji, but Orter can cut through without starting fire. As I say already, Orter light is more purple and pretty annoying and it work on 445 nanometer. Neji light is more blue and work on 450 nanometer, so almost the same, but the Neji just making fire and soft material like balsa. So after Fimer upgrade, Orto laser work different and it's more powerful, that's for sure. We need to set lower power than before, but I really doubt that it work with only 25% of power before upgrade. Anyway, cutting capacity is much worse than on 20 watt Neji model, and also engraving is still much better from Neji. I make lot of tests with Neji and Orter machines with different models. You may see in my videos about, otherwise welcome to check. I got lot of questions which one to buy and I will tell once again. I will choose Neji, 3.5W for engraving or 20W for cutting. Why? Because laser model is much better, more powerful and got amazing focus. It's really easy to use and Neji software is awesome. But it's slow and if you work with bigger speed it become unaccurate. But if you need that laser for some small series production or something, I suggest Orter, because it's about 4 to 5 times faster than Neji and still accurate at that speed. I also got comments if I try to mount Neji model on Orter machine. Actually I was thinking about. So let's try to make a hybrid and take best parts of each engraver. Firstly I remove boot lasers. It fits mechanically without problem. Screws are on same position but wiring is different. Orter got only 3 wire and Neji got 4 wire cable, so I can't just plug them. On the Orter is pretty clear, black wire is negative, red positive and the white is PME signal. What about the Neji? I found this picture, but better not. I was really doubt that the green and yellow wire is for power supply, so I measured the voltage and figure out that the standards still work. So red and black wire is for power supply, yellow one is for PMV signal and the green wire is for temperature feedback. But I want to be sure, so I plug the voltmeter to black and green wire. It show 1.26 volts and software show 26 degrees Celsius. If I hit model just a bit, voltage and showing temperature raise, so green wire is temperature feedback, for sure. Then I plug voltmeter to black and yellow wire and try to start some engraved with full laser power. And I measure only 2.3 volts. On Neji website it say 3.3 volts on full power. Into laser GRBL I can just turn on laser with full power, so measuring is easier. And I got exactly 3.3 volt between PMV and ground pin. So signal voltage are the same and Neji laser model should work on Orter machine. It fits without any modification, just screw it on. I only make a test so I didn't make new cable, but just improvise. So I connect boot cables with 3 pieces of wire, red to red, black to black and white to yellow. And here I got ready to work hybrid, with Neji power and Orter speed and precision. It can cut same as Neji, but with bigger speed and accurate. I already say why to buy Neji or Orter, but if you want the best of that machine, I suggest to buy low power Orter machine and separately 20 watt Neji model, and you got awesome engraver and cutter. But in that case count another 40 bucks for light burn software, or forget to cut the XF or NC files. I think that's it for today and enough laser videos until Orto release some new models with nice specifications somewhere in the end of May but I can't tell more. 
thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe if you like and see you next time.